Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here. Welcome back for Eve Talk, your weekly look at the market in Eve Online. And well, CCP dropped some stuff for testing last week, which is all about the new player experience. So I made a couple videos about that. You can uh, watch them, of course, if you haven't already. I would say the first bit where it is flying in space and you've got a little bit of a storyline going with some nice cinematic uh, transitions from like targets to back to your ship and things like that. That looked pretty cool. Uh, I think if they can you know introduce that into different types of content as well that for instance if you would land in an anomaly you would actually get a quick zoom to the enemy or your main target for instance where you've got the loot uh, and then you zoom back out it's just a dynamic thing that could help I think uh, making uh, that content a little bit more uh, less static than, than what it is at the moment uh, and then the second big thing that's going to change is the uh, skill window uh, that to me still doesn't feel quite ready Ready for prime time so I'm actually going to let's just dismiss this here um, honestly I've gotten used to this one um and then uh, basically next to that they've got the new skill plans which there will be a use for uh, that but it had all of these extra graphics which to me felt like it was like using way more real estate than it should uh, so that didn't feel quite uh, optimal uh, just uh, just yet but overall uh, it's what CCP of course has to focus on if we want new players to stick around in EVE Online and uh, hopefully they can uh, you know iron out all of the bugs as well and uh, we can get a, a smooth experience there but we will see obviously for veteran players uh, pretty much no matter what they do we will understand the skill plan window oh, let's just dismiss that like that then um, we will understand the skill uh, window and we will understand the skill plan window uh, just a matter of, of getting used to it a little bit but for newer players honestly I would say that this uh, is easier to understand than what they've got going on CC at the moment Anyways, next up, as always, we'll take a quick look at the New Eden store and see what's happening over here. Um, I think that the sales are over. Uh, so CCP did do uh, late summer a, a decent, good, um, a decently good amount of uh, sales on a lot of pretty cool skins, but that is now over. Yep, not spotting any sales here. And then on the services front, everything is up and running. So nothing special to report uh, for uh, for this week. But that means that we get to move on straight to the markets. And as always, we start with some plex and stuff, and that's coming in at. Uh, I actually changed my setup a little bit, so I need to look for it. 250. 250. Is it? All right, like that. And uh, let's get started. Let's dive in with Plex, which you may already have seen on the ticker. is up just a little bit. But you can see on the chart, it's actually a little bit of an in inflection point. And uh, interestingly, at the tail end, we do have the 5-day moving average and the 20-day moving average coming together just below the 2.6 million uh, mark. And uh, with a little bit more... Um, volatility and a little bit more schwung i do think that uh, the increase even today's daily average is, is uh, already above everything else uh, we could be back in an uptrend here uh, which to me makes a little bit more sense considering uh, inflationary uh, forces that are happening in the game at the moment uh, but uh, a lot of players said yeah there's just fewer players so that is actually a deflationary thing but i think that the market tends to look ahead and uh, not just price in what's happening at the moment so uh, we will see if this has any legs but at the moment it's still 2.65 million for the sellers 2.6 million almost to the buyers it's that gap that has closed to me that looks pretty obvious um complete domination now by jita 44 of course we still have one seller coming in in the tranquility trading tower who still hasn't uh, caught wind of the tax changes that's now actually more profitable to sell in jita 44 but uh, you know most trades now back into the trade station we still have like probably over two months uh, of the low taxes to go at least and then we'll see what CCP decides to do depending on the impact that that will have as well and then a buyers couple of buyers in tranquility trading tower uh, that are still sticking around but again most of these going up to almost 2.6 million are uh, happening in Gita 4.4 so looks to me like this is actually pretty strong demand that has pushed the price back up and uh, it could actually create a little bit more room here for the sellers to go up as well although there is a decent amount of selling happening as well look at that all of this at 2653 
and then we have to go uh, quite low to get for instance to a 2.7 million so uh, supply is ample but the mods actually picking up a little bit pushing that average price back up then we've got the multiple pilot train certificates basically mirroring that move as well ending uh, the downtrend that was start especially on that 20 day moving average and daily average is going below 1.3 billion we are picking back up sellers coming in at above 1.3 billion buyers well above 1.2 billion i think this is again same thing a narrowing of that margin between sellers and buyers that has uh, driven the low end up and does the average prices has been pushed right back to well an average for like the last couple of months or so ever since that uh, increase has uh, really taken hold then we've got the skill extractors that are also bouncing back above the 300 million mark and this to me i mean you do see that the 5d moving average is already flattening off a little bit but if it has more legs uh, then potentially we could be in for a, a decently good upswing because 5d moving average and those daily averages really start to shoot up well above that 20 day moving average should really bug the trend uh, so if the month can stay and uh, then i do think that eventually we'll see a lot of these sellers start to uh, move up in price as well above 300 million for the sellers and 295.5 million for the buyers that's a super narrow margin for something that only costs uh, only that costs around 300 million is so this is again buyers coming in to the market being a bit more aggressive and for now there's plenty of uh, demand to uh, to basically flatten this off uh, quite quickly but i'm not sure if that's going to keep up actually the impact on the skill injectors well next to nothing still very very flat uh, at uh, probably a 620 million range or something like that increased volumes after the uh, tax changes do seem to have dropped off a little bit as well i think everyone has taken their positions 622 to 23 million for most sellers 600 million for the buyers um, it's also a pretty expensive item uh, but this still feels like it has room to grow if we look at this chart started here at 700 million isk compare that to plex that basically came back to its start of the year range um, these uh, these uh, skill injectors are definitely uh, still relatively cheap if we compare it to that uh, on the other hand of course we all know that ccp has been again very generous with skill points i think reducing the actual need for these uh, skill injectors and that's part of well the problem you could say if you're banking on high prices for these and we we don't know if ccp will actually ever change that uh, because you need some hook i think and sp is one that's obviously uh, accepted by the player base as being all right within the rules of the sandbox and um yeah it's it's in all likeliness uh, here to stay then we've got the small skill injectors that are again doing their own thing dropping off a little bit going back below 130 million is despite higher volumes that are actually maintained we now have sellers that are have dropped off to less than 125 million and buyers are at 118 still pretty narrow margin but here we do have an oversupply situation uh, that is basically uh, inc decreasing uh, the price for these small skill injectors whereas the large ones have been able to basically be a little bit more flat uh, compared to that although here again uh, five day moving average just jumped below the 20 day moving average daily averages on the downside so there is a little bit of pressure in the injector market at the moment let's see if the daily alpha injector can do its own thing yes it does that's kind of interesting as well i wonder if the npe announcement has something to do with that because in a matter of a week we do have a pretty sharp jump up to 43 million for the sellers 40.5 million for the buyers and uh, well will it have something to do with potentially some more people trying eve online um probably not it's, it would be too fast for them to get on that treadmill of earning 40 million isk um, a day and trying the daily alpha injector it's just a lack of supply there's really not a lot of daily alpha injectors available there is still demand again i do think this is a, a very nice item in fact that ccp has created from that uh, perspective of make something available that's useful for these alpha players that's a reachable goal uh, and and that's a nice hook for them in the game uh, you know 40 million you can get lucky uh, with exploration or you can grind that out 
relatively easily uh, in the game setting that as a daily goal or uh, a weekly goal or something like that it's actually an amount of isk that's quite overseeable and as a result that demand is still here and we push the price back up above average towards 45 million at the moment very uh, sharp takeoff here as well all of a sudden and then finally we've got the hyper cores that are well also finally stopping that descent so this is definitely like a sign that the market is expecting deflation uh, at least in the hypernet relay but I, I do think that this is also a little bit of a gauge indeed for general activity so this decrease in price could be explained by a fewer players actually playing the game just fewer players using the hypernet relay uh, less demand thus lower prices uh, and a little bit of inertia probably in how much of this stuff uh, is actually available because it only costs a couple hundred thousand isk 275,000 in fact for the sellers and 265,000 for the buyers but right at the tail end here again uh, we haven't crossed the 20 day moving average yet but we have started to move back up a little bit uh, on i would say a read that inflation um, is definitely a possibility after the summer let's move on to the minerals next that's coming in at 11.5 My marker isn't writing very well, but that should do. Uh, so as always, we will start with Tritanium. And yeah, you can see right here on the chart as well, uh, we're back on the high end with 5-day moving average above the 20-day moving average, which is basically hugging the 4.5 ISK mark. And you can see it on the ticker as well, we're back on uh, probably like a little bit less supply. Well, there's someone that just came in with a 455 sell order, but most are at 460 and above. Um, volume wise we're talking half a billion units uh, is definitely possible and it's mostly the high end of what's being sold uh, for uh, for Tritanium buyers coming in at 436 so it's really that 4.5 is range on a little bit more supply we dive below that then players decide to hold off and then you can see here the 460 price band uh, is uh, is definitely doable as well uh, for uh, for Tritanium so 4.5 is the uh, new 6 ISK before the industry changes uh, that has reduced the amount of Tritanium needed in EVE Online in general. It was around 6 ISK with periods above that when there was high demand or less supply and uh, once we got below that suppliers knew to hold off a little bit because a better price was definitely in the books but that has completely changed here after the April rush and uh, now we have just have to accept that it's the new normal for Tritanium. 4.5 is that reasonable price once you go above that definitely a good idea to sell if you need the isk once you go below that i would personally start to hoard that stuff a little bit more and wait for uh, for uh, like a, a better price later down the line Next up, we've got Pyrite and doing the opposite move, although here again, the 20-day uh, moving average very flat at the current range, uh, but we dive back down on the daily averages towards 17.5 ISK, 17.45 for the first seller, 17.13 for the buyers, really narrow margin here again as well, uh, with Pyrite basically finding that price range um, still below 20, not really able to break out of that. I don't expect that to happen except on like a unique situations maybe extra demand after a super capital fight or something like that or a capital loss uh, big capital losses that could happen in nullsec we could then see that surge uh, but that has generally been the trend for uh, for these minerals that you needed uh, for real disruption and for potentially really high prices i just ccp intervention of course like here in april uh, but uh, those capitals and super capitals are just so big they represent so many minerals uh, that uh, big losses there can move the market um, but in general our our uh, sub capital economy is easily supplied by what's mined and then you get this very stable market which is you know periods a little bit above average a little bit below and right now we're back on a slightly below average uh, period next up we've got mixalon that is uh, also still flat staying is it below 60 let's see yep staying below 60 is a little bit of pressure on this one as well 5824 for the sellers 5590 for the buyers historically speaking pretty cheap i would say 75 has been the average and if there is one mineral that I think will be the first one for, from the high uh, segment that could indicate increased uh, activity uh, in NOSIC, it would be Mexalon. I do think that it is always uh, going to become one of the early 
uh, bottlenecks and that Noxium for instance would be way more volatile because of, of the much uh, lower supplies that we got there. Uh, but Mixon is definitely an interesting one for me to gauge just general activity and if we manage, would ever manage to reach back seven to 75 isk or something like that, then I would personally say that yeah, Nelsec is back uh, producing uh, way more stuff than it is at the moment uh, and so at the moment we're basically flat there's not that much to report here uh, let's just see what the price will do uh, as the summer ends and hopefully we see a pickup in general activity after that we've got isogen completely different story here Ooh, a little bit of a breakout all right back above 60 very good news and here you guys know that i'm still speculating that uh, many of these big sell orders like right here 28 million 15 million units 12 another 20 another 15 million that these are still old reserves that are in the system uh, but look at that they're starting to be a little bit more far and in between um and so that potential uptick in price, although down here, uh, you still have a couple hundred million units that are in the weight as well. Uh, but it's good to me to see that whenever it dries up a little bit and you can start to see that it's only a couple of these big sell orders that are still dominating the price, the price response is quite sharp and uh, almost immediate, right? In a matter of a week, we're back up to almost 65 ISK for the sellers and buyers forced up as well, 61 point point four uh, for these so this is that first sign to me that uh, we are starting to chew through all of these reserves a couple of days of uh, increased volumes can just make that happen at the moment if they are then consumed um, i again do think that this is another metric that ccp looks at uh, uh, and uh, in order to decide uh, what to do uh, with scarcity which they have announced that they will be ending in q4 well from from the perspective that all right isogen has been the worst hit mineral from the resource bonanza it was really just become a side product that was overproduced no matter what you focused on you could focus on any other mineral in nosec in isaac in losec didn't matter isogen would be that byproduct that you would always mine more than enough uh, of and so that one lost like 90 percent of its value you can see down here went down to like 20 isk or something like that for something that used to be way more expensive than mexalon um, and we're slowly normalizing that but we still have a couple hundred million at least units of isogen to go through here in Jita before active supply and active demand uh, pick up but I do I do personally expect that we will then see a price that will be actually substantially higher than Mexalon as it sh uh, it's already higher at this point but not by much uh, and honestly you can see here Mexalon able to uh, on active supply get uh, 10 million units couple million units uh, to together uh, for uh, like the more de the most dedicated miners or those with a little bit of patience um, isogen if we disregard those really big ones you can see that most of those sell orders are below a million you get a couple of exceptions uh, but half a million um, and uh, and like a, a million could really become like the high bound of these volumes and that should really uh, push those prices up uh, still considerably then we've got uh, our other uh, low sick mineral which is noxium that basically doesn't want to go below 1000 isk uh, which i would say is, is very interesting as well and here this is potentially the future dynamic for isogen as well 1080 isk for the sellers 1010 for the buyers but if you want substantial amounts of noxium uh, you are going to have to get it into low sick which either requires right, making friends with some uh, some pirates or being becoming part of their operations but it's another like a small cartel that can basically dictate the price of noxium and they're just not gonna be willing to bring noxium uh, to Jita apparently if it goes for well below a thousand disc and so here we get a little bit of stalling happening today's daily average already slightly on the upswing and so you do have like a, a, a unique um, cartel uh, in Losec that is basically controlling Noxium at the moment and will in all likeliness also control uh, the price of Isogen, uh, at least in, in a very big way, have major influences on that. And that should, in my opinion, just like here, put a serious floor 
on the potential of these prizes because they're just gonna want to keep that uh, isk flowing and, and they're easily able to do so especially in low sec piracy uh, is uh, their bread and butter so i think that they, they can easily make sure that everyone listens to that mandate or uh, they can influence the price just by starting wars and things like that could be really interesting when that dynamic starts to take over in isogen as well and well it's active supply against active demand that uh, starts to dictate the price you'll see way more volatility where high sec is like super stable especially if there's no big consumption happening of uh, large ships uh, these low sick ones could really see some some very nice volatility and yeah uh, thousand to twelve fifty uh, that's a pretty sharp um, sharp increase and that for the most expensive uh, mineral for tech one production so very different dynamic which eventually I think will make its way into the isogen market as well then we have Zydrine from Nulsic that I think is, is way more stable. Yep, still below a thousand disc and basically really stable. Uh, 900 disc for the sellers, 842 for the buyers. A little bit of margin here, which is a bit of a surprise because here we were also talking about basically a cartel. Uh, if you consider Nulsic as like one entity. And that will dictate the price but here we are talking way bigger way more organized groups as well uh, that have like very uh, developed uh, supply chains as well and so bringing Zydrine to the market um, I think it, it will just create a little bit more competition and a more stable uh, product to this price as well which you can see here in Zydrine basically sometimes slowly ebbs to a thousand uh, but then supply does come online and then I'm sure that there are some Nelsic players that already take it advantage of that but in general we've been super stable in Zydrine. Uh, Megasite has been a little bit different with one bump to 700 but you can see that we pretty quickly absorbed that uh, and that now we're actually still below 600 disc we're normalizing for that as well but yeah last couple of months and this is all that the April rush managed to do here. So I think here you're, you're seeing that it's basically scale that is keeping this uh, in check as well despite the fact that you gotta pretty much go to Nulsic in order to produce these minerals 604 is for the sellers 564 for the buyers very affordable uh, compared to noxium whereas megasite and zydran used to be more expensive than nox by quite a bit and then finally we've got more fights that has you know continued to descend a little bit but is now stabilizing at least it's below 100,000 this should be slightly more affordable 93,000 for the sellers and 91,000 for the buyers so more fights still really expensive uh, lots of demand but that's also tick 2 related so slightly different from all the other minerals let's move on to the pi market and that is coming in at 22.25 let's see what's happening here i personally think it's gonna be more of the same unless um, uh, we see some like uh, investments being made but in general advanced PI materials uh, have been doing quite well on this one yearly chart basically recovered almost fully on the price and uh, brass cost notes still well above 1.5 million 1.7 almost for the sellers 1.6 for the buyers that's a pretty narrow margin here for broadcast notes and so a lot of these advanced PI materials have this extra demand due to the mineral uh, the industry changes that happened in April you need some of that stuff in carriers dreadnought supers uh, all kinds of stuff and that has basically really managed to uh, or allowed them to recover and they're able to defend these ranges uh, pretty effectively uh, not such good news for the refined PI materials all of these have been suffering quite a lot construction blocks used to be more expensive than this 10,000 disc and above was like a normal average price so you can see that lack of demand showing up uh, we do push back a little bit but yeah we're staying below 8,000 uh, so it's in fact a little bit of pressure building right now 7260 for the sellers 7100 for a couple of buyers and then we go down quite drastically and quite quickly and it's basically a bit of a bounce from uh, a one year low point of 6000 disc which we've done uh, like uh, late june as well this is really not good news this will get squashed by supply in my opinion very very quickly uh, we'll, we'll start to play around 7000 disc probably in uh, in no time and that's just the reality that we have to accept i think uh, that the easy to produce pi materials are really being overproduced there's way more supply there's just is no demand uh, for this type of stuff or not a lot of demand for this type of stuff and so it has become 
uh, very passive is very low price uh, that's just the reality of it once you go into the more complex stuff it also takes more of a setup a little bit more preparation maybe some alts and thus they have that extra demand but this stuff consumer electronics for instance i think that was like 11 to 12k as a normal average price is down and struggling to stay above 5000 disc that's really not not a lot 5700 for the sellers 55 for the buyers really really cheap very very low prices coolants is basically stopping once we broke 6000 disc people said all right that's like a 30 percent loss in a matter of uh, two to three weeks that is uh, that's enough starting to uh, make some move on that but 6600 for the sellers and 62 for the buyers again for something that historically was 10,000 or something like that decently easy to produce plentiful gas planets out there but it was tied to fuel so it had that stronger demand thus uh, we had a bit of a recovery like maybe 80 percent of the normal price uh, through the month of may up to uh, august but right at the end here we get uh, uh, just it just didn't maintain that and now we're back in uh, super low prices cryoprotected solutions still below 100,000 is isk as well buyers at 92,000, doing a little bit better uh, because it is tied to implants but here again uh, you can just see how much less demand there is than uh, than supply and um, it's just at a pretty low price range at the moment if you want that implant investment this is still the right time to do so in my opinion enriched uranium same story in august we broke and uh, we're back down to 7500 isk 7.5 for the sellers. In fact, sellers starting to come in below that. There is a little bit of demand here at this price range, but how much longer can that uh, maintain with these, uh, with the pressure from these sellers? It could go down to another uh, lower price point, in my opinion, uh, considering what's happening. Integrity response drones then back to advanced, a little bit more complex, more expensive. And again, you can see those higher volumes. So there's definitely that interest. And we're talking almost 1.8 million for most sellers and almost 1.7 for the buyers. Definitely a reasonable price. Uh, it's been way worse before. Mechanical parts <laughs> tied to fuels again the August breakdown down to 6,000 disc which is like the lowest range close to one year low point 6,300 almost for the sellers 6,000 for the buyers it's like also again 40% below its normal price then we get nanites tied to uh, implants definitely one that starts to maybe look interesting for uh, potentially an investment although again i gotta say feels rather risky in pi just the demand isn't there but this is a one year low point we're below 4500 disc for a refined pi material 49 for the sellers 4500 disc for the buyers that is definitely uh, like really really cheap for something that's actually used in uh, like consumables so you you would expect like a little bit more of a stronger demand a little bit more uh, of um a floor that can be created here by the market but no even nanite repair paste can't keep this stuff in check uh, this is also tied to implants by the way so lots of consumables but nanites just crashing down to a one-year low point nano factories again different story for advanced pr look at the increased interest highest volumes of the year just yesterday or the day before we're running out of these and we're back at a million isk for the sellers and almost 950,000 for the buyers that is different that is stronger demand which again is due to the industry changes and for me another another slight sign that yeah uh, activity is starting to pick back up guys and there are places where in uh, industry uh, despite the new uh, rules that are more complex requiring more stuff that uh, you know players are putting in that effort and thus we do have that increased demand in a lot of these advanced pi materials organic mortar applicators uh, bouncing back up a little bit as well and we are in fact almost at 900,000 for the sellers 750,000 for the buyers and again that stronger volume it is starting to uh, take hold so i'd say from that perspective that is pretty good news uh, even recursive computing module despite the bad data point that's skewing up the chart uh, we're back above a million 1.2 million for the sellers 1.1 million for the buyers that's really in my opinion showing that there is aggressive buying for these advanced pi materials uh, it's tied to um production of large ships but also structures and so here we could also see an effect that could be a little bit more temporary as the imperium rebuilds in delft 
And then we get robotics <laughs> tied to fuels, more bad news, one year low point yet again breaking down below 55k on average, 57,000 for the sellers, 54,000 for the buyers. This stuff historically 100,000 and above was a normal price. Self harmonizing power cores stable above 1.5 million, 1.6 for the sellers, 1.55 for the buyers, narrow margin, lots of demand for advanced PI. That's quite uh, visible shell conduits comfortably above a million almost 1.2 in fact for most sellers buyers forced up above a million as well that's some upwards pressure right there you come with superconductors below 70k let's see where those buyers are at 62 and i love to buy below 60 this again with uh, a bump here uh, potentially tied to uh, implants and this potentially investment if there is a new implant set coming out that could pay off and then with our mainframes making its way back above 1.5 as well 1.65 in fact and above 1.5 for the buyers again pretty aggressive buyer buying advanced pi material uh, definitely one of the winners i would say of the april changes in industry but everything else lacking in demand advanced moon mats next coming in at uh, 30 30. All right, let's see here. Personal expectation. I do think that advanced movements are quite often impacted by potential wars. Things have uh, cooled down, I think, a little bit uh, lately. So I do think everything is normalizing, maybe with a little bit of pressure on the prices. Let's take a look. 1.1 is crystalline carbonite for Galente production. Well, actually, I would say up for the week, but again, nowhere near the previous peaks. Um, so at 175 on the chart, 175 for most sellers indeed 170 for the buyers showing i think uh, enough demand to still ask a premium from uh, like uh, the start of the year uh, or about a year ago uh, but uh, not peaking back to like 200 to 25 uh, so those are probably over probably then we've got the titanium carbide for caldari which climbs its way back above 200 here again 20 day moving average nice steady uh, increased in price here 210 for the sellers 180 for the buyers which again is a little bit of a premium uh, but we are not in the 300 350 range anymore so all of that volatility is gone but the premium actually a little bit of surprise to me i thought we would see more pressure uh, but the premium is uh, easily maintained for now fernite carbide for uh, minmatar actually again staying well above 150 at 178 for the sellers 166 for the buyers so you can have that that one big peak but then volatility just keeps decreasing uh, but obviously at a higher range and then for Amar we've got where do I find it here tungsten carbide if I click on the right one also uh, you know immediately shooting back up after reaching that average price probably a 160 or something like that and back above 200 discs so uh, 185 now for the sellers couple of sellers coming in but demand is strong enough to go to 177 and so don't expect right this pushes down to below 150 to happen that often apparently you know getting close to 150 is already enough for the market to say that's some cheap tungsten carbide we're gonna move in and you can see how quickly it pushes the price up on average expect a bit of a premium compared to last year for the metamaterials we were way more stable so perhaps we'll see that pressure mount here photonic metamaterials yeah at least a little bit of pressure be below 12,000 this week uh, for the sellers 11.5 for the buyers then we've got uh, Kaldari non-nearly metamaterials yeah we had that pressure last week and basically not really able to break out of that so we're staying below 20,000 by you know, 19,000 for the sellers and for the buyers demand is strong enough uh, but clearly uh, a little bit of pressure here then for Amar we've got terahertz metamaterials same story back below 15k which is definitely the low end of the range and then for Minmatar, we're talking about plasmonic metamaterials that also over the last month or so has lost a little bit of ground and is basically right on its normal average. 17,000 for the sellers, 65 for the buyers. And you can see buyers are less plentiful than for all the carbide stuff. So we are seeing a little bit of pressure, I think, mounting due to just supplies that have a more stable situation with uh, Nelsic being less on fire than what it was a couple months ago. All right for the other ones that should be even more bad news of course because these were already 
under pressure on that low uh, general activity except for maybe ceramic fibers and phenolic composites that could still maintain a little bit of a premium but was losing it lately but yeah this is just more bad news you can see here fermionic condensates was at a one year low point last week stayed there for the whole week and now breaks down just no demand look at that 36k for the sellers 53,000 for the buyers is at a one year low point sell price and then the demand is just nowhere to be seen and is trying to push us to even lower ranges ferrogel tried to get back above 30k can't maintain that we're back down towards one year low points as well 29 for the sellers 27,000 for the buyers fuller rides all right this one moving back up a little bit uh, but again if you follow eve talk for quite a while you know that a price above a thousand disc is actually a normal price for fuller rides so this is like a little bit of a comeback but it's still very very low at 820 for the seller 785 for the buyers then we get hyper synaptic fibers continuing the trend down to 9000 discs not much to say on that one nano transistors same thing just you know back down way back down from a 5k which was okay finally for nano transistors and very very stable and now actually breaking down at the tail end 3860 for the sellers 37 for the buyers pretty damn cheap and under pressure then we come to final two phenolic composites is yeah, basically coming back to its uh, normal average price and I think that this is actually uh, showing that these have become a little bit cheaper in the sense that you need a little bit more of it in the general industry uh, almost 1600 for the sellers 1.5 so pretty narrow margin uh, but again there's like way fewer buyers than sellers that's causing these price pressures and ceramic fibers are the same story you can see here obviously uh, announcement and was immediate we need more of this so we're gonna buy that but eventually now through the summer the pressure is unstoppable and we are back below uh, 400 in fact 355 couple of aggressive sellers 330 for the buyers are starting to open up that margin again so potentially we could see even more pressure on this price as well it's that's just been the situation for uh, most of the summer i would say for the other advanced materials and it's just being confirmed at the moment and will these be able to recover on that increased activity that we're starting to see for instance in advanced pr materials uh, in all likeliness i'm gonna say no because part of that rebuilding and infrastructure is just going to uh, consolidate and make these supplies even more effective next up we've got the tech 2 ships coming in at 36.55 Uh, so last week there were some slightly interesting things. I'll do a quick look here. Holdings, I'm still holding a Manticore for 27. So that still can't really be sold at a profit. And then a Prospect for 21. All right, that one emptied out all of a sudden. So I could uh, buy this. And then a sell order um, Endurance. Let's see if, uh, yeah, definitely sold that. You can see what's the cheapest here. So made 5 million profit on an endurance and then the kitsune that one probably won't sell but we'll keep it and uh, let it do its thing and so here are my completed trades trades to uh, have a reference point the basilisk first of all the chart starting to see a little bit of pressure uh, but staying above 200 million so definitely still too early for me personally buyers are at 195 so these are definitely starting to be a little bit more interesting um, potentially lose that one try to buy 192 something like that would be the dream of course and there is a lot of supply compared to the demand so potentially that could get filled and then um, that could be an interesting buyer you see the potential 200 to 230 was an easy trade to make so despite the average price is staying above 200 million so it's going to be difficult to trigger a buy order you're able to buy below 200 million which could be okay uh, but considering what we're seeing in advanced movements, I would be very careful. Again, I'm looking with longer horizons here in Tech 2 rather than Twitch trading. Cerberus, same thing, right? Back under pressure, not able to build back to a 250 and above. We're talking 217 million for the sellers and still 206 for the buyers. That's a really narrow margin for 200 million item. Um, and Cerberus trade, do I still have one in here? No, but I remember that I've been able to buy one, for instance, for 185. So it should be possible to knock out all of these 200 uh, plus million uh, buy orders on and off supply and in a continued situation. And that's what I would personally be waiting for before jumping in. 
the Guardian uh, flat below 200 million. You can also see that we don't have this volatility at the moment. That's not what I'd be looking at. 196 million for the sellers, 182 for the buyers. And I got a Guardian trade, 185 to 200 million, which you can maybe still make happen. Uh, but again, uh, I, I would personally wait for a little bit more of a drop off, maybe a buy uh, like below 180 or something like that. Then the hound here, we did see that move, I think last week where I said, yeah, buying a hound would make a lot of sense. Unfortunately, uh, I didn't really have uh, the time and I spent most of my time in a Mars space. So I didn't have the opportunity to do these trades. Uh, but this one was quite noticeable where we again hit that 22.5 million on the chart and now we're back up to 27 million 23 million for the buyer so there was definitely a slight bit of a trade that was possible uh, in this one the bad news again we're now peaking uh, below 27.5 so this keeps going down um, you know you won't get really big trades hound trade for me last time look at that bought for 20 below 25 million and sold for 30 and unfortunately that sold for 30 won't be uh, replicated uh, too soon I don't think. Ikitursa slowly continuing to go down on probably a little bit more Triglavian supply, 670 to 644. All right, this is our metric just to see what's happening there, but it's still, of course, super expensive. Uh, the Ishtar, same thing, did a bit of a bounce after we touched on 200 million, but nowhere near like a 250 plus that we got in April and in May. So we're talking 220 million for the sellers, 201 for the buyers a normal margin so i would need to see us move down again uh, before i would like uh, buy manticore same thing really hovering in that what would it be 27.5 to 30 million range that is not tradable this stuff is tradable right buy below 25 sell above 30 35 even that's great this has just gone down in volatility so i would say i would look for a breakdown below 25 million buyers are still at 27 <laughs> sellers are 27.5 that's too narrow a margin to really do anything so unfortunately that's a no again uh, the Munin quickly recovered here as well, back up to 230. So again, this is tradable, but compared to like the potential here, the potential here, even the potential here, it's really not that good. It's not enough volatility. Back at 221 million for the sellers, buyers forced up 212 for a couple of aggressive ones, but it's 28 ships. So that should uh, keep that price in check yet again. Now, if you buy these cheapest ones, You've got a good buy, but you need the patience before you can really uh, make a good trade out of that. Nemesis is still under pressure, going back down to less than 25 million. But you can see the potential on the chart is to go way lower. 26 for the sellers, 22 for the buyers. I mean, you could, if you really want to, and you expect, like maybe you know something, bombers, bars, stealth bomber related in Nolsec, uh, you could try to buy below 20 million and make something happen. Um, but it feels it feels risky because we're just not lacking uh, we're just not uh, seeing the volatility the numbers to really make that happen on Nero's same story basically settle right in the middle at the 180 and it's 181 for the sellers 166 for the buyers that starts to be a little bit of a gap that's opening up here as well fortunately again these are average prices will indicate it's very difficult to actually grab a buy order for the on Nero's at the moment and the question can still be asked again won't we see even more pressure over the upcoming weeks so couldn't we buy lower uh, i think that's a more likely scenario than now we start to see that volatility here again which we had in december february and another peak here in may so uh, i would say that patience is what i would personally recommend in the tech 2 market panther another quickly absorbed a spike so we're back under 1.2 uh, just above 1.2 billion for the sellers and just below for the buyers so pretty narrow margin it's a little bit of a premium from about a year ago so the industry changes have made it more costly uh, but overall feels like it's all right and then the purifier which you know really dipped at uh, that low point again we saw that as well last week i said if you'd invest yeah purifier hound looked like an opportunity um Let's see what the lowest average price is and try to like 22 million. Let's say that you could have bought below 22 million, you know, at 25 for the sellers, 24 for the buyers. So yeah, would that, would that have been a good purchase? Absolutely. Are you going to make an immediate trade, which like for instance here, buy below 25, sell above 30 in a matter of a week? 
no that's just not going to happen uh, we're basically keeping everything in check on both sides and then we get the scimitar again uh, we need to see like close to 180 for the buyers we're below 180 for the buyers here yeah big enough of a, of a gap 200 million for the sellers 180 for the buyers that's a 20 million margin that's definitely uh, that starts to look interesting um, and you get some data points in between so you can actually pick up a scimitar in all likeliness for around 180 million that one if you'd had to do anything that would be your purchase with again that same warning don't expect it to 30 million to show up next week uh, and i honestly think that this scenario where the buyers will slowly just start to drop off and then on any decent supply over a couple of days you will get those buy opportunities i think that could happen in a lot of these ships that we have uh, been looking at the window going back uh, window going back up a little bit uh, 1.3 billion almost for the sellers 1.2 for the buyers um, so but not like a tradable volatility or anything and then the zealots is seeing continued pressure as well uh, selling for 195 buyers are at 180 um yeah I, I, honestly you could you could try to buy a cheap zealot uh, but uh, with a bit of patience maybe you can buy below 180 as well so the take to ship market uh, some buy opportunities uh, but again you'll want that patience then we've got the tech three ships next that's coming in at 45 35. Yeah, really having trouble writing there should get a new pen uh, but uh, let's get started and the confessor so here i did a decently good sale i would say bought for 35 million sold for 45 million that's a 10 million profit almost a third on the buy and this is after taxes the way that i mark these that's definitely pretty good and so this is i sold early but i was already very happy with my profit so i sold on this upswing and i bought probably here somewhere maybe like a touch too early uh, but uh, we're talking now 49.5 million for the sellers 40 million for the buyers so the confessor edging its way again back towards 50 million is a little bit of supply but really not a lot coming to the confessor so what's the likely reason this one hecate went up to 55 million so what do you want to bring to the market hecate's obviously and now one is slowly going back down towards 50 million but slowly 52 million for the sellers 49 million for the buyers and here is where the supply is at 22 here 10 here a couple of days ago another 100 almost for the hecate it is going to continue Continue to put a little bit of pressure on the price but it can uh, give breathing room to our Zwepel here which was my expectation let's see the impact on the jackdaw also another upswing to 55 million probably a little bit of buying or speculation very quickly absorbed back but we're still talking 48 million for the sellers 47 million for the buyers with again last three days or so a lot of supply being drawn in for the jackdaw so i think that we can push the Hecate back below 50. That's still going to ask some supply. We can stabilize the Confessor, but that's also going to ask some supply. All of that should give room for the Zwepel to finally go back up. And it's still not. It's actually going back down. So, all right, let's see what is happening here. Still below 45 million. 44 million for the sellers. Four sell orders. And then 41 million for the buyers. I'll be honest, um, if I were a betting man, uh, I would try to buy a Zwepel. 42-ish million, something like that. I think uh, if the Hecate does uh, continue to need more demand, which it does, to bring it back below 50 million, uh, the Jackdaw um, can maintain, you know, doesn't need that much supply, but the Confessor needs supply. That should, in my opinion, give the Zwepel uh, a little bit of breathing room to go back above 45 million and to create a sell opportunity. Uh, on what you could be buying at the moment this is my read on that that's of course never a guarantee uh, but i think it is possible especially that confessor completely drying up i mean there's a lot of supply here uh, in the hecate that's decent numbers and then even more in the jackdaw um that could maybe uh, cause things to normalize more quickly than i expected but yeah that confessor this is what's available let's take a quick look including the trade hubs yeah this is what's available it's still 49 million going up to 60 like in just half a dozen uh sell order that is not a lot that will need to be plugged 
um, and then uh, the Hecate still needs to go back down. That should be just more supply, more effort going to these two and it should create an opportunity, I think, in this vehicle. We'll see if I end up right or not on that one in the upcoming, uh, it should be maybe one to two weeks, uh, by then we should know. Then we get our cruisers with the Legion going back down to the 180 million range on the chart. In fact, 175 for the sellers, 172 for the buyers. Um, could be interesting. We're definitely trading below the range of, um, of the last six months. Uh, that feels pretty cheap. But again, this would be, in my opinion, a gamble. So if you want to buy one Legion, I definitely would not blame you. Uh, we're below what we've seen in the last six months. There's not a lot of demand. It would make a lot of sense. But don't guarantee any profits on that. Uh, because uh, there is just no... The numbers are just too small to say, yeah, all right, this is supply demand that's doing this. 205 million for the sellers, 196 for the buyers of the Loki. A little bit of pressure, definitely completely different in range from the Legion, so that's not something I would try to buy. Proteus is starting to land at like, what, 155 or something? Yeah, 156 for the buyers, 166 for the sellers. That's also relatively cheap compared to like the last four or five months or so. Um, so okay to buy not yet okay to gamble in my opinion and then the tango is continuing to see some pressure as well but it's still at 200 on the chart so that's another big no for me below 200 for the sellers 190 for the buyers now, if you're looking for that real gamble i would say the loki if you're looking for something that i'm expecting can be useful uh, we're talking the Zvepo uh, for buying and I again would not never want to spook the market so just a couple or something like that uh, would be my go-to but very interesting we'll see uh, again if this comes out for the f uh, destroyers cruisers you know it's a gamble you could take uh, but I would never risk more than a single purchase at the time on these and then for the extra product this week, I'm choosing the shield rigs. Um, since we took a look at salvage over the last week, which was seeing some pressure, but a bit of a bounce here in August as well. Kind of interested in seeing what should be a popular segment of the rigs. And that's coming in at 51.20. Yeah, damn it, that writing is difficult. But let's go. That should be in um, doo -doo -doo -doo, ship equipment. Here are the rigs. And we're just taking one segment that I think should be decently popular. Uh, we'll start with the small ones. And we'll just quickly go over these to try and look for trends. Yeah, definitely up in price all of a sudden here. Small core defense. Field Berger uh, all of a sudden going for 88,000 ISK. But you can see here a month ago. Average price was 20,000 ISK. That's a sharp increase. Um, then this one is still very cheap. Let's see if we can find one year low point actually. So that's in line with the cheap stuff. Uh, field Berger, that's pretty low. Not much to say on these. Small explosive shield reinforcer, also really low at around 10k. Of course, it is small, it is for frigates, so that is definitely in a really high availabilities and easy to produce. Uh, take two versions are like 1.5 million above 2 million for uh, some of the more popular ones in all likeliness but even the ex yeah the extender actually for 6 million uh, that's a pretty popular one that's definitely quite expensive uh, still 6 million for the field purger as well core defense operation but a little bit of pressure starting here in tech 2 uh, which is again also in line with what we're seeing with uh, all of the uh, raw materials they are starting to cost a little bit less back below 1.5 so we're seeing pressure in Tech 2, at least in the sh small shield rigs. Most of the uh, Tech 1 small shield rigs are really low, one year low points. With one exception, our capacity safeguard doing a little bit of a bump right here. But that's really been an exception. So honestly, right now, cheap salvage and pretty cheap small rigs as well. Medium rigs next. Let's get started on these. Try and make sense of these charts. Very difficult to read, honestly, but this feels like cheap and steady. A little bit of an August upswing here in the medium core defense charger, but that's still an average okay price. Bit of a bump as well, but from a one year low point. Um, core defense field purger really low as well. That's pretty slow and steady. A bump from a one year low point. So that trend does seem to be uh, confirmed here. And then take two, same, th same story here so far. Even the take two medium shield rigs, probably like the 
the uh, um, popular ones like a field extender 19 million but looking here on the chart it's definitely the low end of the range below 20 million is relatively cheap uh, field burger also below 20 million so again um, actually I, I think a comment said that uh, how how are rigs then getting more expensive well at the moment I mean a couple of have like an August bump but most of them are actually at a pretty cheap price at least small and medium next up we get large so we'll go over these as well that to me feels again like um, low end and quite a lot of pressure this look at that that's obviously uh, 4 million start the year at 8 million we do have that august bump here again but from a one year low point so that makes absolute sense field purchase right now uh, at a one year low point 3 million for the sellers 1 million for the buyers and so you even get buyers that get those rigs for that price again august bump but from a one year low point so these are not in my book expensive rigs get again a little bit of um an exception but in this a little bit of an exception but even now very quickly back to a below 250,000 disc average price so that means you can actually put up a buy order for these rigs and get cheap ones if you want that's interesting uh take two again that that slight deflation that's been quite steady here even in the large rigs is visible 7.5 million let's go to the field extender more popular one obviously 80 million but what's 80 million on this it's like the low end of the average price so again we have that august bump coming from 70 million uh, but it's that's in line with what we saw in salvage oh, excuse me uh, bumped up against the microphone potentially there uh, but yeah so we get that august bump which is in line with what we saw in a lot of salvage but coming from pretty cheap price ranges field perger same exact same story so overall even in the large ones here a bit of a more significant bump uh, in this uh, large core core defense operational uh, solidifier too uh, but overall yeah this one is 100 million was 75 at the low end but this is this is the august bump and we saw that uh, as i've said right here as well in the em uh in the in the south so this this does make sense especially uh, if it's like some of the big bigger bumps and on the bigger uh, rigs let's take a quick look at the capital ones i'm not sure what's happening here this could be completely difficult chart look at the volumes here not even traded every single day but again take one that that to me feels like it's decently cheap um field extender right that 20 million that's at like the low end of what we're seeing on the readable chart 25 million same story so take one is confirming that for me and then take two it's gonna be all right again the august bump from a one year low point uh, and then the um, expensive one the more popular one yeah, it's 400 million isk a bit of maybe like an early bump but just a month ago in july we were at 300 million definitely again trading at the low end of the range couple of exceptions but yeah these charts right that's very difficult when only one or two are traded a couple are traded in in a month it's difficult to make a good chart and something in visible on this one uh, but in general uh, yeah, the bigger you go the more volatility the lower the volumes that's normal as well but i would say for this shield rig market we actually have a pretty cheap summer with august starting again to show that potential turnaround that increase in demand increase in need for all of these rigs uh, and so that could be good news for again industry starting to uh, pick up as uh, yeah, there's enough need for it that prices are starting to come back up but saying that rigs were not um are not affordable and were not affordable like over the summer is definitely not true to me all of these felt like quite low prices actually and there you go guys that's it for this eve talk as always thank you very much for watching and listening and i'll see you all next time